Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not my dad walk on. Man, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. We got a special guest, man, and she really don't need no introduction, man. Beautiful Colette B. Smith, man. The first African American female coach. How, I mean, how does that happen? Uh, hard work, determination, believing in yourself, passion and see an upliftment for our black community. Man, I mean, you know, um, it's something that's uncommon because you don't see a lot of females in the NFL. You don't see even do, doing much of maybe just comment, you know, commentating on but games. But they don't even look like us. No, no they don't. They're they clear don't, about that. They're real clear about that. It's a lot of that that go on in little segments of what the NFL does, right. to be honest with you. But it takes opportunities, too, because I would think that um, many women probably before you have tried but not succeeded like you did. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't even know if I was, this wasn't a full intentional, I'm going to coach in the NFL. It just happened because I wanted to support my women's pro football team. Oh, okay. So it was pretty much me looking out for other people. And God blessed me with this platform that I use to continue to empower my women in sports, my, especially my women in the football. Yeah. And especially my black youth, my black sisters, and all the black community out there that's so overlooked and underserved. Man, when I look at you, you know, that, that what what you accomplished is something else to be. How was it being with all the different, because you have a lot of male machismoism, you know, a lot of, you know, these guys are macho and they're not used to seeing a woman in these roles either. So how, how was it adapting to that? To taking instructions from you. So, you know, this really wasn't that uncommon for what women, especially black women, go through in corporate America, right? So this was not new territory for me right. because being a black woman that worked in corporate America, I was usually the only right. woman, mm. let alone the only black woman in the boardroom. So this wasn't different for me. This is the way it's been my whole life. It's just it went from sending an email to being on a field doing the same kind of work yeah which means leading yeah yeah so, that's I, so my, my question is though because um me not being from here and learning to adjust with um racism and you know the way how things are here in the united states um i've always heard that oh you will get by quicker than somebody else with a darker complexion because your lightest complexion how many yeah. times have you heard that i've heard that my whole life I've heard that, so I'm, I'm an HBCU girl. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I am an historically black university and college student. And my school was Tuskegee University. T-U-U awesome. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> T-U-U know. Awesome. And so, you know, being surrounded with black people that were in college, mm -hmm. in a university, looking to improve their lives. And empowering each other. And empowering each other. Mm -hmm. I still got the girls that were like, oh, well, you have it easier than me because you're light skinned, mm -hmm. you can pass. And I'm like, you know what? You feel that way, but the other, I'll just call them the others. The mm -hmm. others would see me and know I was black. Right. Light skinned or not. I was still black mm -hmm. and, and and proud of it, but so it's it's no different. It's no different. But then I, because I have relatives who are um, of mixed culture, and they would all and I've seen it everywhere. And a lot of times people feel like, okay, I'm not white, but I'm not black. Where do I belong? The black, you know, put me as an outcast, but the white also put me as an outcast. Like yeah. that's been a double standard for us. We we get ping ponged back and forth between discrimination with the others and within our own and within our own and it's a hard uh, balance and you have to really have a strong belief in self man I agree with that you would have to because yeah. at the end of the day uh, what you said earlier about being a woman a female a black female 
and then and then it's almost a double standard as well because now you in this male dominated uh, situation. But even in corporate America, even on jobs, people face these type of challenges all the time. So yeah. I see how you how you brought it to a hey, this is the same thing that I've been facing the whole time. I just did some interviews with ESPN and stuff and some other folks, and and I get asked this question all the time: How does it feel to be the only woman? in the room yeah. when you were at yeah. you know in the NFL and it's it's no different this is nothing new to me you know there this this needs to not be a story and, and and the reason why I say that is because how about we just hire people mm-hmm. black white male female right based Qualified on their people based on their knowledge right. and their experience and what they can bring to the table as opposed to saying, wow, you're the only black woman here. It's not about that for me. So, I mean, that happened to be what happened, mm-hmm. but it wasn't what I, it wasn't why I set out to do it. But do you feel that you opened the door for others to Absolutely. make it easier? Should I say easier? I mean, I don't know if it'll be easier to a degree, but I do know that as our great Madam Vice President said, I am the first but mm-hmm. not the, the last. last. Exactly. So I am the first, but not the last. We have more women coaches. We have more black women coaches. Jennifer King is one of them mm-hmm. with the Washington team. You know, she's after me. She's doing it. She's still there. I left to take a seat back to use my platforms to empower black youth right now. Grassroots approach, foot soldier on the ground. I'm not waiting to empower our people later on. I'm doing it right now, but she's there. You know, I mean, all I can say is that, yeah, I'm the first. Yeah, yeah, but I... And how long were you there for? I was there 2017 Mm -hmm. during training camp with the New York Jets coaching the defensive backs. That's right. That's the position that I played when I played pro football and that I coached. I also coached my women's pro football team. Wow. That's awesome. Like I said, it's just, it's mind-blowing that, you know, that you were able to accomplish that. I'm just being honest with you because of the way the sport is set up, the way it looked all these years. You got to, what was the craziest thing that happened to you when you was dealing with it? With, with football as yes, a totality? With, as a totality. Football so as a totality. So I think the craziest thing or the thing that I'm most upset about is as a child that just gravitated to this sport. It's sports. It's a ball involved. Kids in a ball. Mm-hmm. Kids want a ball mm-hmm. to play with, right? I wanted football, that ball. And my, my older brother got to play on an organized Pop Warner community team. And I was told I'm not allowed to play. Because you're a female. Because I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. And if you think about that, if you really break it down, it is the same where blacks couldn't ride the front of the bus. Exactly. Blacks were not allowed to vote, you know, and so for me, same difference with me not being allowed to play a sport and as a child. But especially because they would make an excuse and say because you're a female, you'll get hurt. Oh, like the boys can't get hurt. But they look at women as being like the softer vessel, so you're not supposed to. Yeah, which is so unfortunate (laughs) because we birth people. You know what I'm saying? We push people out of our bodies. Yeah, it, that's strength. Man, <laughs> okay? I can't deal yeah. with it at all. I can't even be in the room. You she can't said, do that. I can't even deal with but it. They'll, but they'll say you can catch a ball. You know what I'm saying? We throwing balls out. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's, so you have a nonprofit organization that you're dealing with now? I do. So, um, I'm still in a pending mode. Okay. For my company, so my company, what's it's it? called Believe in You Incorporated. Okay. I love the name. Believe in You. I'm I'm glad you just said that you like the name because Believe in You came to be based on my father and I's conversation. Okay. So. And is he still living? Yeah, my dad is here. That's my boy. That's my dude. Awesome. He's my rock. He keeps me in shape with uh, growing my mind. Mm -hmm. My I called my dad up when I got invited to a New York Jets football practice, and I was going to this practice to get support and help for my women's pro football team. Mm -hmm. And they said, but we want you to come to the practice and we can, you know, just, you know, come and enjoy. I said, I don't have time to enjoy. I got work to do. And they said, no, really come. 
So I got to talk to the head coach of the New York Jets. At that time, it was Coach Todd Bowles, okay. mm -hmm. a African-American man, hey. mm -hmm. head coach in the NFL. We only have two in 32 teams right now. He was that. one of them right. back in 2017. And so I'm, I'm there doing the practice, watching the practice, but I'm seeing things that needed to be corrected. You know, I'm a football novice. I'm a football scholar. I'm a football, I love football. So as he and I were talking, he said to me at the end of the practice, he said, you know what? You should work for this organization. And I said, I agree, I agree, <laughs> I agree, coach. And so as we kept talking, he told me to bring a resume. Mm -hmm. And he said, come back whenever you want. We want you here. You came back the next day. And I, I did. <laughs> I just figured that that's, that's you. I yeah. already can pick that I was on, I, Before I got home, I was rebuilding my resume. Right. Typing away. But I got to my car, and the first phone call I made was to my father. And I said to my father, that's your best friend. I said, Dad, can you believe that the head, a, a head coach of a New York team, a, a, of an NFL team, said I should work for this organization? Can you believe that? Dad, can you believe that? And he responded with, I can believe it, mm. but I would be more proud of you if, if you believed it. I love that. And so that resonated with I me so much that I had to do a company because there's so many of us that really don't sincerely believe in ourselves. And for somebody else to believe in you is great, but when you take ownership of yourself, is what will change the world. Man. I tell what my daughter that move mountains. I tell my daughter that all the time because I tell her this. A lot of people you see out here look so confident and think that they're running stuff. You'd be surprised how much of them are like self confidence is not there. They put on a show every day to yeah. fool people. And yeah. those are some of those people that will commit suicide or, you know, yeah. do crazy stuff. And you wonder how did that happen? Yeah. Because yep. everybody put up this facade right. to make... How about, how about we be real human beings? Yeah. A human being yeah. that has feelings, that and feels flaws. pain, that feels love, That's that right. feels loss, that has insecurities, exactly. that speaks about them, that doesn't try to hide it. How about that? Man. And so that, to me, would make a better world. Exactly. I totally agree. I, I just lo I lo I love the fact of how passionate you are about the conversation that you and your father had. You know, that's dope, man, because at the end of the day, everything that evolves around you has helped to cultivate and change people, man. And, and, and that connection with you and your dad permeates all the different lives that you guys touch together, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. You got to look at it from that perspective. Absolutely. <laughs> because without it, it doesn't happen. Right. And we know it, it ain't even the people that you've met. It's the people that you didn't even get to see that knows that you've done this and it's going to give them opportunity in Correct. history. So and that, tell those stories. That's live, man. I mean, you know, what? When, when you think about that, with the conversation with me, with my dad and I, he's someone in my corner. Let's think about ch our children, our black community that, that go to schools where the schools, let's be clear, I'm just going to say what it is. The schools suck yeah, mm -hmm. right. in, in underserved communities, mm -hmm. right? And these children aren't being pushed with teachers and principals saying, I believe in you. Yeah. I believe in you. You're right. And so I was fortunate enough to have a father and still have my dad to tell me that. And so how can I keep that gift alive and bring it to somebody else? You know what? Because it shouldn't just be for me. You know what came to my mind, the whole, you talking about all of this. What I, th I don't know if you've done it yet, but what you should do is create a skit with, you can put your dad in it, reenact that exact conversation, put a passion Ooh. in it, Ooh. and then put it out social media everything Ooh. even like a commercial I'd you could dope. still put yeah. your, your foundation underneath it i like that because then you see kids who look like us seeing that and be like i need to believe in myself because yeah. that right. message exactly. that he just gave you is not just the fact that he believes in you it's the fact that you need to believe in yourself that's the part that everybody needs right. to get and to do that skip because you gotta think about it when government or food companies or whatever want to 
hypnotize us. They hypnotize us with commercials on TV every day. Every day. When you see these delicious meals, and it might not even be great, <laughs> but it comes on TV. The it next looks you, good. It looks good. The it next looks, thing you yeah. want to do is go out here and buy it right. and try it. Right. So, I want to. You know what? I love that you said that because that is exactly what I'm pushing. I'm not pushing um, false hope. I'm, I'm. I'm not pushing a meal that looks pretty and when you get it, it doesn't taste good. What I'm pushing is self empowerment. Right. What I'm pushing is black love. Mm -hmm. What I'm pushing is for us to love each other and ourselves. What I'm pushing is for us to know that we're valuable. What I'm pushing is for us to know that we are special. We are children of God. Do you ever see commercials like that on TV? I don't, besides Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> That's right. You oh, see? yeah, you're yeah. right. You're yeah. exactly right. So I created my own commercial um, in hopes that these big brands would see it and say, well, we should do a story on right. this or a piece or a commercial. And of course, it never got picked up. But if my name was Becky, it probably would be out there already. Okay? Yeah. yeah like, but, I'm not blinded but, by this. Okay, but let me ask you a question. How hard is this? Because on TV, when you think about TV, TV to me, like regular channels is almost like that. Everybody's on Netflix and YouTube and all of that. How hard is it to get a commercial? Because all the movies, big screen movies, are going to Netflix now. They're going to Amazon Prime. They're going to all of those other streaming yeah. platforms. Like, how hard is it to get, like, an ad to put out on these platforms? That's compared money. To no, it's money. Uh, get it invested. It, it's a lot of money, but at the end of the day, it's who you know. If you, like me and you, if I, if I can make it happen, I'm that guy. Like, I know how to make it happen. And, and, and I society. have the people that's making it happen. Like that lady, who was the lady that, uh, the Juneteenth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, shoot. I can't Oprah. Um, Oprah. 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 Um, yeah, the, the, that started June 19th, the, the holiday. June 19th. June, Juneteenth. Juneteenth. There you go. No. Juneteenth so, okay, is okay. our liberation. Yeah, correct. Right. right. But, but she, she did. She did. A, she was mm. with Obama, wasn't she? Right. Well, uh, she, she I mean, was, I don't know who she is. Oh, okay. But she did something that was great, and they did a commercial, and Nike picked it up. Mm -hmm. um, and it was my friend that helped to do it. Well, then where's your friend? I have my phone right here. Give her the number. I got you. I got you. Yes. Yes. We're going to pop know what, it off. Because that money thing you said, it is true, but if you have the right resources, and here's you can the make thing. it happen. I've heard from so many people, oh my God, we love you. Mm -hmm. We adore you. We love what you what you're speak talk. about. It's all talk. Bring it to the table. Right. You know, I need it to be tangible. I need to touch it, feel it, know what's happening. Not just hearing what you're saying to me. That's true. To make yourself feel good for that moment. Yeah, I agree. Because it's not about self moments. Mm -hmm. It's about making that moment exist and stay here. But don't let yeah, that discourage yeah. you because oh, that it can, doesn't. Because it can it be. Does. It can does. be right. It does. Because you get tired of being very that, real. Right. You get tired of being in that situation and keep yeah. hearing people talk about it, talk good, and don't come for, oh, yeah. come through with it. But at the oh, same yeah. time, it's just you spreading the word, and the more people you tell. You never know what God is going to place. this has been going on since 2017. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm it's still waiting. And, and, and did I say waiting? No, I'm still standing. You yes. are I'm amazing. still standing. Yes. But I, I'm not going to wait on you. Now, if you come through, that's peace and love. Mm -hmm. Good. But I guess I'm keep waiting moving. to give the peace. I, I'm right. keeping it moving. Keeping it moving. Keep you, it don't, you don't ever know when that time is going to be. I already know. Like Keep I said, it the, the more you people you touch, and the more you tell your story, the more magnifying it's gonna get, mm -hmm. and that you touch the right people. Like I said, I know people, and I'm gonna be calling you. I'm not gonna just talk. I know people, so I'm good. We try to network. I'm an engineer we too. Try I to network. Yeah. You know, like we point people. We've done this. We've been in this business now a uh, full year, but because we come in contact with so many people, we always like, okay, this is what you need. This is who can help you let let me connect the dots and that's what we try to it's do it's hard to connect the dots i mean the dots start you know you might get two dots which means two lines and then there's a whole lot more dots <laughs> that you can put in and it doesn't happen right you know and you could only you're only i'm only one person mm. yeah so you, you don't know? have a team with you i don't have a team and 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 the one you know there's never enough time in a day to get the work done that i need to get done and, and for me, I just want to be out there with my people and, and, and letting, know, letting our children know that mm -hmm. they're important, mm -hmm. that they're valuable, mm -hmm. you know? And, and my, 
I didn't start to love myself until I was 42 years old. Wow. And what happened that made you start loving yourself? Football. Football saved my life. Mm. You know, I'm... What path were you on before football, why you said football saved your life? The path I was on was self-destruction. It was literally self-destruction. And um, I'm a five-time rape survivor. Wow. My favorite aunt in the whole world, I'm named after her, Colette. Her husband raped me when I was in a freshman at college. Really? And he raped me so twice. So you were grown? I, well, I was 18. Eight, is that really grown? Say, yeah. You know, is that mm -hmm. really grown? I was right. still a kid to mm -hmm. a degree. And I went to college to be a veterinarian, a doctor of veterinary medicine. That was my dream. My dream wasn't to be an NFL coach. I wasn't allowed to have that dream. Right. They told me I couldn't have that dream because I mean, if I can't play football as a kid, how, how would I dream to be an be NFL coach, coach one day? Right. So my dream was to be a doctor of veterinarian medicine and I went to an HBCU to be that. And then I got raped by my aunt's husband and then my family shunned me, my family disowned me. I have a question about that because you know how some people be like, how can you get raped by your ex-husband or a husband? I've heard people say, but no, my no, husband, by her aunts. I know. No, uh, aunt. my, no, no. Aunt, my aunt's husband raped yes. me. Oh, the second time. Both I'm talking. Times. Oh, okay, Both okay. Times. I thought you said your. That was the first two oh, rapes my that I had. Oh, your yeah. aunt's yeah. husband. And that's crazy, man. So the same person raped you twice. Yes. Oh, okay. And did you tell your aunt about it? Yeah, but it took a while. It took a while because I, mean, I was, you know, when you get raped. I mean, God forbid nobody understands, and I hope you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you're. You feel defeated. You feel dirty. Wow. And, um, you know, my dad raised me. I'm a strong girl. And so to let people down that love you, that think you're strong, and then you got overpowered, it's hard. So, no, you, I didn't tell my aunt right away, of course, and I was hiding. I was hiding. Um, but eventually, when she, when she did find out about it, you know, she told me that she wished I was dead. Wow. And she told me that, um, I wish you weren't she here. She blamed you. Yeah. And so I had to deal with that for the, my, young, my young adult life. So then I started dating all the wrong men. I started associating with people that I otherwise wouldn't have. And back then, it wasn't a case, because now everybody's talking about getting counseling. Back then, it wasn't no such thing as no, getting counseling. No, and there's still not enough counseling today. You know, we talk about it. There's probably more, there's probably a higher percentage of people that are getting counseling, mm -hmm. but it's still not where it should be. You know, so I lived, I walked through life not loving myself mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Not Literally. thinking you're worth it. I was, how was I important? My grandma disowned me. So you My went aunt through a threw lot. me away. Wow. Was she the one who was raising you, your aunt? No, she wasn't, but she was a big part of my big life. Big part of your life. You know, so I went from being hugged and kissed and, and squeezed in the bosom of my grandma to being pushed away to say, you know, they told me, shut up. Shut up, child. But when you, when you think about it, though, Colette, when you went through that, and then after you went through it, to end up being a, a coach for a defensive I'm still Hold standing. On. That's right, a defensive yes. coach. A defensive coach? Right. I mean, I, that's, that's, I mean, you, you went through a lot, but it, it, I think it was somewhat preparing you for what you was about to deal with. It had to be. Because God don't, you know, I, I think he's always there for us no matter what. Because, you know, honestly, this is my opinion. This is my opinion only because we've interviewed, um, a woman, she started a foundation called We Are Survivors. Yeah. She had been raped from ever since she was six so she or was, four. She was four. Four. Her, her biological by her dad. Stepdad first. Yes. And then by her father and by her, I think that was her husband. Husband, yeah. And all the way up till she was in her 20s, and it's been, be it was going on because she would, and to her it was normal because being treated like that from a child, you didn't know any different. And she, how they would treat her is like, if you wanted nice things, because they were in the military and they had money, and if you wanted to go shopping, this is what you had to do. Her own father told her, you are a woman, you will never do it out as long as you have that between your legs. 
That's yeah. what her own father told her. But she and, created and, this foundation to help others. And she became a doctor as well. You, to you know, help to others. To help counsel others. But and, the re sorry, but the reason why I'm saying that is because you have some people out there who, like example, you've been through what you've been through and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. But if I went through something like that and you've never been through it and you're coming to me to advise me on something. Some people will be like, how can you advise me on something or try to help me through something? But you've never experienced it. You don't know what it Listen, feels like. I, I experienced that with my, um, my biological sister. And I think oh, that's the hardest part. The hardest part is that you're my sister. And she went through it. And no, she didn't go through it, but she's telling me, telling she would you. tell me, you know, oh. you're playing the victim oh. or you always bring it up or, mm. you know, you don't want to, so, like, I, I may see, you know, family members with a photograph with our family mm -hmm. and my rapist is in the photograph and then all of a sudden I recoil mm -hmm. and I'm like, how can you be with him? And then I have my sister say, you're playing the victim. Mm. Wow. And I'm like, what I want is, I can't curse right now, but mm -hmm. but I'm like, B, I, I was the victim. Yeah. So do yeah. you have a relationship so with her right about? now? No, I don't. And that's the same thing, the person that I was telling you about, she, after she came out with her story, because growing up with her dad, everybody thought that she was the princess because nobody knew what was going on. When she finally came out, everybody was against her because they thought that she was lying. Because how can you be a victim when you always would go over with him? You, I mean, it looked perfect from looking in from the outside. Nobody knew. Right. So, and imagine how many more people, how many more children are going through this right now. That's what I think of every day because I had a good mom and dad. And I was a happy kid. I used to be a happy kid. And then... This happens, and my whole life changed, not for the good, but for the worse. And um, I just started rebuilding my life at the age of 42. Wow, <laughs> get some tissue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's taking you know? a minute. Mm -hmm. So, when I think about what football did for me, football showed me that women can be strong. Mm -hmm. And, um, and overcome. And yeah, definitely, you know, it's still a process, right? It's definitely still a process. Have you ever gone and gotten any sort of counseling? Of course. Does it help? Yeah. No, it didn't help, no. No, my counselors were like more interested in talking about themselves, but it's, <laughs> but, you know, but, um, you know, but you seek it out, but you know, I find what's cathartic for me is to, um, speak to our black girls yeah and i think that okay correct me if i'm wrong so if you see someone a teenager because would you be able to pick up the signs just by yes. the way you see what quicker than a regular person yes you see what i mean so yeah, then yeah. you could always approach that child oh, and yeah. try to build and a relationship and i do is that what the foundation is centered as around too so no, it's not centered basically on that, on this, but it's centered on just an, on total empowerment, empowerment of okay. black Everything. youth. But that definitely would be a lining in, in, in Oh, it is. Because it is. a person who's been through something like that will, I mean, their self-confidence is shattered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that person would need more empowering than a lot of people yeah. just to build that back up. Even if they were empowered as a kid, but to go through that trauma, that shatters you, just like what you said earlier. And you have to help them build that back up. Just like you said, counseling might not have help, but to actually speak to somebody. And for me, I would think that even although you haven't overcome it 100%, sometimes helping somebody else go get through it can also help yourself. It's cathartic. Help that's yourself right. get that's through cathartic. it as well. That's exactly you know, right. and, and, and that's, a, that's the mission. So like when I speak to God, and when I, when I talk and I, I think about things, when I say, please God, give me a platform to empower other people. Um, I know everything that I've gone through will not go in vain. That's it. 
you know, there's a reason Everything why. Everything happens for a reason. I put, there's a reason why I've gone through the things that I've gone exactly. through. Exactly. And, and I discover every day that it is about my experiences, my testimony mm -hmm. will help somebody else. So I can't see me as a victim today. I'm a survivor. You are. Exactly. And um, I'm pushing hope. That's a big word, That's hope. That's a big word. Yeah, very big Only word. four letters, but it's a big, big word, hope. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing hope. Man. And then even just at, um, a young woman seeing something like this um, might be wondering, or a parent seeing, like, how can a child stop something like this happening? You know, like, were there any signs that you could have done something different so it doesn't happen? Oh, yeah, there were so many signs, and my family turned their back on all of them and right. didn't disclose that to me. I mean, I saw signs, but I'm still thinking, like, it's my aunt. It's my aunt. She loves me. And she would never put me in harm's way. So then we, we want to, as human beings, we want to trust people mm -hmm. and believe that if I'm in your presence, if something happened, that I would protect you mm -hmm. the same way you would protect me. Mm -hmm. And especially with family. So I didn't, I didn't get that. You know, so my level of confidence with the world has been adjusted. Mm. And so I am now more adjusted to help others. That's wow, awesome. that's awesome. Thank you so much, man. Um, so, yeah, so I, like I said, I definitely appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk 101. Went a lot different than what I would have thought. <laughs> that's how this show goes this sometimes. This show does that all the it time. Does. God is the one in control, so I don't try I'm to I'm God's it. servant warrior. <laughs> yes. He but knows I'm a warrior. For but sure. But if, if someone to walk Game on. If someone to <laughs> if they, Game on. If somebody wanted to reach out to you, whether to help you in your um, journey or want to um, point you in the right direction or, or, need help or, from her. or need a help from you because of things that they've been through, how, um, they, how can they reach yeah, out to how you? How can they do it? So you can reach me um, on Instagram, on IG, at Colette V for Victory Smith. So it's Colette, C-O-L-L-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, V for Victory Smith. Okay, cool. My cousin, is she in the building? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get, hey, 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 get that round, the round table for. Uh, I thought you was doing it. No, she wants you to do a round. Like, Take like a picture. A, oh, a video? Video. You want a video yeah, or a picture? Yeah, like, I mean, oh, yeah, he, to show, yeah. Yeah, he got he, it. He got it. I need mean, all, all, like, all that. I don't yeah. play small. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Hey, yeah, yeah, get, get, He's yeah, like, yeah. Ay, 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 ay. get up, get up, get up, get up. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, but you know, the thing I say about you is, man, uh, you, you still, like I said, dope. I go back to that defensive side, understanding, was it, was it the corners? Was it the, was it I the, well, no, the, the defensive end? The, Which one was it? I look, it was the cornerbacks and safeties. Okay. I played safety in, when I played pro football, and I love to get a hit. I, I, okay. Did you love to get a hit, cough, hit? I need you to cough the ball up. Okay, let me know. Let okay. me know who was your, so you didn't, was Dion the best to ever play that position? Oh, I love Dion. Was, was he the best to ever? Was he the best to ever? Who is the best? Who is the best? Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. I don't agree with that. Roddy, I'm not I don't agree care with what that. you agree with or not. <laughs> I don't agree with that. This wasn't a question about what you agree with. Uh, Ronnie Lott's one of the best DBs to ever live in this world. Yeah. Uh, mm. in, in NFL land. I love me some Deion Sanders. Don't get it twisted. Uh, he is the you best. Know? Deion Sanders. Shout out Deion um, in okay. Dallas, Texas. So let me ask you a question. About that. How do you think the Super Bowl going to go tomorrow? Yeah, that's a good I mean, one. Oh, good question. You know, so, so, <laughs> so I think the Rams, are, they have a, a clear advantage. Uh, I mean, come on, Darnold. I mean, this, this is a clear advantage here. But I'm a woman that roots for the underdog. Underdog, yeah. Right? <laughs> so the brown, the clear I'm an underdog chick. Yeah. As a black like woman, I'm an underdog. 
Okay, so I got so a roof for me. Okay, so and us. So it's, it's, it's the Bengals. But Bengals. imagine what a city is gonna be. Yeah. Okay, it's but, the Bengals. But imagine what a it's city gonna Bengals. be <laughs> if they ever it's lose. It's the Bengals. It's the Bengals. It's the Bengals. Imagine but. if they ever lose though in their own city. How is that gonna affect this city, right? Uh, that's that's their advantage. <laughs> <laughs> it's their advantage. So I mean, I'm I'm proud of that. But guess what? The New York Jets. Ain't never been in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's because, <laughs> shout out to Gary. Since, Gary, look, Gary. Wait, since, wait, wait, since wait. 1913, I'm just wow. making a joke. I'm just saying it's been forever. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So, so to have a new stadium built in Los Angeles, California, called SoFi, and and then the stadium is built, and then they're they're gonna be in a championship game mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Listen, whether they win or lose. It was a That's chance. still a win. It's yeah. still a win. Yeah. So I'm going for the underdog. The Bengals. I have to go for the Bengals. I do. I have to go Let, for the Bengals. But, but I wanted to say, man, because I never did check for the Jets. Like, uh, Gary v, Gary v, Vaynerchuk is a guy that always say he's going to be the owner of the Jets one day. And I want to be the owner of the Jets. You want to own it too? Hell yeah. So. You think I, that team have that much promise? No. So why you want to own it then? I want to change them and fix it. <laughs> you, you think you can? Like to fix it. I know I can. What do you think that they're doing wrong? A lot. <laughs> like? She ought to know she was over there. No, I'm not going in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I'm get not, me twisted. <laughs> like, no. But no. you, because you, you, you have definitely roots in the, in that organization. So you can't really say it. she got to be right. careful. How much politics is in? Um, a lot. <laughs> mm, that's what I heard. A lot. Yeah. A whole lot. Hmm. I know a player that was fired because he had to go to a Trump. Right. Mandatory Trump uh, event. Mandatory. Mandatory Trump event. And he didn't want to go. And he didn't want to go. He was going to go, but he expressed how he did not want to go. And they fired him. Wow. That's how the politics go. You know, okay. Wow. So now when you think about the player, the coach, the, the owners of an NFL team, they're not me and you Mm-mm. that work a nine to five and mm. try to make a cut a coupon out. They're billionaires. That's correct. Okay. They're multimillionaires. They're billionaires. They're not concerned with how black people live. And I want them to be more engaged. And I believe they're capable of doing that. Does the final word with what goes on with a football team stop with them, the owner? I mean, they have the last word. And they know? have a lot of power. Uh, they are the power. That's right. <laughs> and they are not black most of the time. That's something. Uh, most of the time. All of the time. None of, none of them, them are black. <laughs> so how do we get there? Well, we need to start making some more start money. money. Like you know, buy you them know Robert Smith is trying to buy a team. Robert, he's a he, black man. Out of Austin. Okay. Austin. Robert Smith. So he may, and he's worth eight billion. So hopefully he can come I mean, up with it. I mean, l- l- listen. If you think about it, I mean, think about the totality of it all. Mm-hmm. S- Seventy-five plus percent of the NFL players are black mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. but we have white owners that don't grow up in the hood, that don't grow up in the projects. They don't know what it is to walk in our sneakers or walk barefoot. They don't know what that is like. Mm -hmm. We need more of a voice. And I believe this NFL team or the franchise that I love, so I love my NFL, I love, I adore the NFL, but we can do better. Call on me. Call on me. I have answers. I'm on the streets. I'm in the works with the people that want to come to our games. Do they care? Uh, you, can, you, you just keep trying to put me on the spot. <laughs> so I'm about, we're about to wrap this up, but how do you convince a, a man that's uh, three, 220 pounds to go up and knock hell out of another guy? How do you do that? I'm just, how do you, you beautiful. Like, I'm just trying to find, figure out how do you do that. I'm in the Get locker the room. Get the job done. That's how you tell I me. I can lay you out right now. What? 
<laughs> I mean, not you, but I mean, I'm I could. just listening to you. I'm just saying. saying. I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Just I, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, like but when I, when I think about it, the women that played pro fo- the women that played pro football in the WNFC, mm-hmm. we give a hundred percent, and it's called technique and foundation. But they don't get the type of money that NFL does. Oh, they don't get any money. Mm-hmm. Not yet, at least. Yeah, but it's going to happen, y'all. It's gonna, I mean, but Pray. you know what? Well, when? When? Yeah. I'm tired of hearing it. It's going to happen, yeah. baby. Yeah. It's going to happen, baby. Look at the WNBA. They haven't even... It's I mean, the happen. WNBA it's is a bomb. You just got to wait but your turn. But they're still nothing compared, to, compared to the it's NBA. They're but, still not there but yet. But at least they're getting some money. Yeah, they are. Now, should I be happy with that? No, hell no. Huh. How do we? How, you go up in there and you tell them, say, "Hey, man, uh, you're not hitting. You, you're not even stepping up. You're not even. You're not bumping them coming off the line. You, right, so how do, you, how do you do it? Here's what I say. Here's what I did say. Um, y'all are getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for this job, mm-hmm. and me and my other women in football don't get paid jack." And we do a better job of what the hell you're doing right now. Wow. So you better fuck. Go ahead. <laughs> you better work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get there. So you ain't getting, you getting paid big bucks and we're not. But we're still giving it 100%. You better give 100%. I get it. And her passion when she's saying that oh, and come yeah. across to them, you can't do nothing but they just go get out there and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Man, it's hard, man. You're a beautiful woman, man, and you are, you just doing your thing. Hey, hey, me and you going to talk too. I got to get we going to talk about that production for that 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 we talked about earlier mm-hmm. about believing in you. Believe in you the, the conversation you your So my had. company is called Believe in You Incorporated. I, that, yeah. you, need you, can follow, you can follow you need me. I, look, Do you have I don't have any money to have t-shirts. Man, we got to get, to get some her. t-shirts. I'm no, nah, we'll get it. We no, she playing. I, I got, don't I, no, I'm not playing. No, no, I'm saying I got we got we got plans. I'm a, I'm I'm going to so, get your number. So yeah, sure. so my company is Believe in okay. You Incorporated. You can follow me on Instagram at Colette V. Smith. The V's for victory. My mama it. would tell you it's for Veronica. But I say it's for victory. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show. You. We love you, man. Love you, too. Man, it's been another great segment. I love y'all. Boss Talk 101. We out.